Now, it's been a bizarre 72 hours in Russia. You might have seen over the weekend some pretty dramatic headlines about Vladimir Putin and the Wagner Group. But who exactly are they and what does this mean for the Russian leader and the invasion of Ukraine? Let's try and break it down for you tonight. Uh, this guy is Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the Russian mercenary group Wagner. They are essentially a private army made up of tens of thousands of soldiers who have been fighting for the Russians in Ukraine. On Friday night, he released this video. It was a message vowing to, in his words, destroy everything in his way and topple Russia's military leadership. He said his troops would march towards the capital, Moscow, in an armed rebellion on Saturday unless he got the chance to meet with some of the country's military leaders. Now, tensions had been building for months. Uh, Prigozhin regularly accusing the Russians of incompetence, but he was very careful to avoid directly criticising the main man. On Saturday, Putin made this address to the nation, talking about treason, talking about betrayal. It got rather tense, and leaders, understandably, from around the world watched on. On Saturday night, though, the Wagner troops retreated because, and these are their words, the risk of blood being spilled. There was talk of a deal going down between uh, the two men allowing Prigozhin to go to neighbouring Belarus. So while the immediate threat to President Putin's authority has gone away, it has left him looking weak, as our political editor Andy Bell can now explain. On Saturday, Russia seemed on the brink of civil war. Forces from the Wagner Group had occupied the southern Russian city of Rostov and were marching on Moscow. And they clearly had some support. <laughs> then their leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, called it off. A deal supposedly been done so he will avoid prosecution. He's not been seen since, but he has released an audio message in which he says he turned his men back to avoid spilling Russian blood. Vladimir Putin has appeared in a video this morning which was pre-recorded and makes no mention of the weekend drama. The outside world is assessing what is happening. 16 months ago, Russian forces were on uh, the doorstep of Kyiv in Ukraine, thinking they'd take the city in a matter of days, thinking they would erase Ukraine from the map as an independent country. Now, over this weekend, uh, they've had to defend Moscow, Russia's mm -hmm. capital, against mercenaries of Putin's own making. Recorded pictures have also been released of the general the Wagner boss wanted to remove, the defence minister, Sergei Shoigu, apparently still in his job. The message the Kremlin wants to put out is that calm has been restored. This was Moscow this morning. But long-term observers of Russia have a different view. When Putin has to then uh, uh, call on the uh, tank regiments to defend Moscow and his most competent and most violent armed force, the Wagner Group, turn on him as well, then he's lost control of the situation. And that has been noted by all the uh, others uh, around him who are now vying to work out what happens next and who to back. The trigger for all this is the war in Ukraine. Western governments want Putin to be defeated here, but they are being careful to separate that from what's happened over the weekend. This is about internal Russian matters. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and therefore what NATO is focused on is to support Ukraine. Uh, it demonstrates the fragility of the, uh, the, the, the Russian regime, uh, but it's not for NATO to in, in, intervene in those uh, uh, issues. It is still not clear what will now happen to the Wagner Group forces and their leader. The Putin regime may have survived this moment of real danger, but it has surely been shaken. Well, let's go live to the Foreign Office. Andy is outside for us tonight. Um, thank you very much for, for talking to us, Andy. And it's one of those situations, isn't it, that the Russians are such big global players, you can understand why our government and governments around the world will be watching this so closely. Yes, and they've been coordinating. Rishi Sunak said that over the weekend he talked to President Biden, he talked to President Macron of France, he talked to Chancellor Schultz of Germany. And the Foreign Secretary here, James Cleverly, has just been giving a statement in the last hour. And one of the points he wanted to make was that it's actually Mr. Prigogin, who is just... Uh, Prigogin, who is just... Uh, destroyed, in a way, the case for the invasion of Ukraine. He says that Prigozhin, and what he's had to say over the weekend, remember, this is a man who used to be very close to Putin, he said that uh, there was no great tension uh, on the eve of the invasion back in February of last year, that there was no great threat coming from Ukraine. And in the words of James Cleverly, the Foreign Secretary, the people inside the Russian leadership can't even now justify this invasion to each other. Uh, the other point that James Cleverly wanted to make was, as we heard Jens Stoltenberg from NATO saying, 
This is an internal Russian matter, and they really want to separate out the support for Ukrainian forces in that war from any kind of suggestion that they're getting involved in what happens in terms of any sort of regime change, potentially, inside Russia.